You are watching Event Horizon. This is the place where people who want to achieve something in life come to get inspiration. Subscribe to our channel for daily videos. Chapter 1. Why do we keep falling for the rat race? Like many other things in life, we choose our jobs to please others, mainly our parents. But what do we want for ourselves? Today, lots of people choose to be trapped in a race against themselves. The rat race idea is that you keep doing tons of hard and often unnecessary work just to make ends meet. You do everything it takes, and your employer, the government, and your utility bills take away nearly everything you've earned, leaving you with little or nothing to save. The rat race is an endless quest where you have to work hard to catch up with bills and taxes. Sadly, many individuals are aware of this rat race and hate to be part of it, but are scared of the backlash from society, so they keep racing anyway. The conventional advice we've all heard is this, go to school, study hard, get a good job, and everything will be all right. The truth is, this advice is a clear indication of how the poor and the middle class see financial security. The rich don't see things that way. This is no longer the recipe for a life free of financial struggles. Good education and high grades no longer guarantee success. Financial education is powerful, while money is where this power manifests. You can go to college, graduate with a summa cum laude, get a white-collar job, and never have financial growth. You need to realize that no matter how hard you work, you will never be the one who benefits from your endeavors. One day, you may have it all and lose it the next day. However, if you are financially literate, you can gain power over money and start building your wealth from scratch. A more significant percentage of people in our society still follow the go-to-school advice to the letters. And in truth, these people may avoid being poor. They never grow wealthy. Societal disapproval prevents us from quitting the rat race and building wealth. Did you know, adjectives broke and poor have different connotations. The first one is a temporary state. However, the second one is an eternal quality. Chapter 2. Fear and greed prompt us to make irrational decisions. Many individuals live a perpetual fear about their financial condition. They are afraid to blunder with paying their bills, getting fired, or not having enough money which would force them to start over. Let's be honest, many of us fear not measuring up to other people's expectations, be it family or society. Then there is greed. Most individuals have a price. Once they get offered a high enough loan, most can't resist the thought of that safe paycheck at the end of the month and all the things they could purchase with it. Instead of taking control, many people constantly worry about their financial condition, stressing about the possibility of starting over or failing their family and loved ones. When those two factors are set up, these individuals are trapped in the pattern of getting up early, hurrying to work, stressing out daily, and working hard on something they often do not like. Then, after a long month, they finally get the paycheck and bills. Each second, day, month, year of their lives are run by a never-ending cycle of fear and greed. How do these two manifest? Typically, we are afraid of losing our jobs, and greed shows when we can't wait any longer to get that paycheck, saving only enough to go on vacations from time to time and forget about the endless, unhappy struggle. Nevertheless, even if we do make money, our greed will try to persuade us that it's still not enough. This is the rat race. Most people are so accustomed to the rat race that they don't even think about it anymore. They never question it and yield to that cycle as something normal. Instead of defying the fear of thinking with their mind, most react emotionally to it instead. In order to realize that we are stuck in the rat race, we need to step aside for a moment and assess the situation from a third-person perspective. A rat race is a tricky phenomenon. On the one hand, we know what to expect and no one needs us to make hard or any decisions. On the other hand, this supposed lack of responsibility doesn't make us happier. We rush to work, scared of being late and getting fired as a result. The more we give in to the rat race, the more our brain learns that this is our natural behavior to run after something unattainable endlessly. 
so we get the education and pass all the exams with flying colors. Then go for the job that should pay. However, this conventional path, conditioned by many others that came before us, doesn't let us experience financial growth. Greed only dictates us to raise our living standards, but it doesn't teach us how to do it. Financially ignorant people allow emotions to control their decision-making. For instance, the fear of losing money prevents them from investing in assets or stocks because of the risk involved. Greed encourages spending money to improve lifestyle, which may seem like a safer option to investing in assets. Fear and greed hinder people from becoming wealthy in the long run. Interestingly, many people become rich not because they want a better life, but to eliminate the fear of being poor. However, the more money they get, the worse is the fear of losing them. To get out of this rat race, you have to gain financial knowledge. You have to understand the difference between an asset and a liability, and buy assets instead of liabilities. Did you know, Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken, conveys the idea of a hard choice between the two unknown options each of us makes at least once in a lifetime. Shall you choose one path? You can never go back and choose the other one instead. Chapter 3 Conventional education systems don't teach financial knowledge. Self-education is the key to financial success. You can't build wealth by depending solely on talent and a college degree. The world is full of poor people with great talents. Financial education, investing, debt, risk, accounting, compound interest, stocks, and many more, is the main factor that creates the gap between the poor and the rich. Sadly, our educational system and school curriculum are not set up for financial literacy. The rate at which high schoolers max out their credit cards these days is a clear indication of how leaving investing, savings, debts, compound interest, and much more out-of-school curriculums affects our mindset. If financial literacy was a school subject, not a family wisdom, getting rich would not be an unattainable godsend, but a very real pursuit. Lack of financial literacy is a problem for both the young and old. Money decisions are made by both sides of the divide. Society has not equipped us with financial literacy and it is up to you to educate yourself. Whenever you start to work on your financial education is good. But the earlier, the better. Invest in yourself, as this is the most important thing. Start by investing in your mind. Enroll in seminars and finance classes. Read as many books as you can. As humans, we often learn best by example, so it's crucial for you to get a mentor. Your mentor could be a person who has already achieved what you want. Then, ask them to guide you. You don't need a lot of free time to become financially literate. Instead, take advantage of your job and gather the essential skills there, which will serve you in your own business when the time comes. For instance, you could overcome timidity by working in the sales department of any product company. You will get the appropriate training with specialized people, and when you start cold calling total strangers, you will forget what being shy is. Chapter 4. If you want to build wealth, you must be willing to take risks. You need to start doing things differently to change your financial situation. And knowing how to handle risks is the biggest change you likely need to make. Financially successful people are risk takers. They don't fear risks, but rather they've developed an uncanny ability to manage risks and get the best of them. Keeping your money in the bank is different from taking a risk. It is more like investing in stocks and bonds. This is riskier than your usual bank savings, but they generate more income in a short time. Investing in stocks and bonds generates more income in a short amount of time. The truth is, predisposition to take risks is what distinguishes the wealthy. While the rich are predisposed to take risks, the poor and middle class tend to play it safe. They hold on to their jobs with their last breath because they fear what could befall them if they lose their paychecks. When the fear of losing overshadows the excitement to win, people tend to play safe instead of investing in something huge. They seem to say things like, I don't want to lose, but in reality, losing is inevitable. The rich focus on their asset columns, while everyone else focuses on their income statements. Robert Kiyosaki As you progress to victory, losing is inevitable. You can never win without losing sometimes. It is a natural way of things, and when you lose, it doesn't mean that you are a loser or a failure. It means you've been given a chance to learn from a new situation and grow. If you want to build wealth, you have to be more than willing to take risks. The financial struggle often occurs when we work for someone else our entire life. Chapter 5. We don't become rich overnight. Learn how to fuel your motivation. The path to building wealth is a long and trying one. 
it's easy to become demotivated when you hit a hurdle. For instance, the price of the stock you invested in might take a dip. You need to remain committed and motivated during hard times. One way to keep your motivation is to create a list of wants and don't wants for reference. It can contain things like, I want to be free of my debts within three years, and I do not want to end up like my parents. This list will keep you motivated in the face of adversities. Spending money on yourself before settling your bills is also another way to stay motivated. This may seem counterintuitive, but you will have a precise idea of how much money you need each month to meet your goals. Working hard for a paycheck and spending the most of it out of greed is the wrong kind of motivation. Don't see this as an opportunity to max out your credit card and plunge yourself into debt up to your eyeballs. Paying yourself first will create extra pressure, which drives you to look for creative ways to make more money. This will also help you develop financial discipline, a quality familiar to all financially successful people. Stay motivated by reading about the life of wealthy individuals like Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, or Mark Zuckerberg. Their stories of overcoming challenges and adversities will keep you inspired. An asset is defined as something that generates more money for you, while liability, on the other hand, costs you money. Your house is an asset. It costs you high property taxes and a lifelong mortgage without generating income. Assets versus liabilities. The fundamentally applied knowledge that differentiates the rich from the poor and middle class is that they buy assets. While an asset is something that generates more money for you, a liability is something you pay for. The examples of assets are bonds, mutual funds, businesses, stocks, and anything else which generates income appreciated over time and can be readily sold. Investing in assets makes your money work for you by passively generating income. Assets generate more money for you. As your assets cover your expenses, you take the money and reinvest it into new assets, thus generating a compound growth effect. Unfortunately, most people categorize liabilities as assets. Many fancy buying a house thinking it is an asset, while it is actually one of the most money-consuming liabilities you can get. With houses come high property taxes, a lifelong mortgage, and they don't generate income. Sound knowledge of how to create lucrative assets and invest in them is what will make you rich and take you out of the rat race in the long run. Chapter 6. Your profession is not as significant in wealth creation as your business. Business and profession are different things. Your profession is whatever you do as your day job that pays your bills, buys groceries, and generally covers your cost of living. A business, on the other hand, is where you invest money and time to grow your assets. It is close to impossible to build wealth just with your profession, as it only covers necessary expenses in most cases. To create wealth, you must build a business while you work at your job. To start your own business, you need cash flow, people, and personal time. The profession of a chef is cooking. It pays the bills but is likely not to make them rich in the long run. They invest in real estate and invest whatever extra cash they earn each month into acquiring income-producing assets. In the same vein, a tire salesman invests their leftover income into stock trading. These two instances show that professions cater to monthly bills, but by committing extra income into businesses, they are growing their businesses and increasing wealth. Your profession will fund your business initially. Do not quit your day job until your business shows sustainable growth. At this point, your asset, not your profession, becomes your primary source of income, and that is financial independence. Sound knowledge of taxes is crucial. The rich have a deep understanding of taxes and they handle them essentially differently than the poor and middle class. Wealthy people focus all their corporate activities around their assets. This way, they can hire professional accountants and lawyers, which help them reduce taxes and protect them from lawsuits. Getting a salary, an employee pays taxes, and then lives on what's left until the cycle repeats. When a corporation makes money, it spends everything it can and pays taxes on what's left. You can learn how to cut down your taxes too. To do that, you need to educate yourself on how the tax system works. The more you spend, the less there is left to tax. Thus, you can minimize how much is taken from you. Did you know, investing means money making money and involves active work of your creative right brain side. Chapter 7. Overcoming Obstacles That Can Cause Financial Ruins Despite Your Financial Literacy Once people have become financially literate, they may still face roadblocks to become financially independent. There are five main reasons why people who mastered financial literacy may still not develop abundant asset columns. These reasons are fear, cynicism, laziness, bad habits, arrogance, fear. Robert Greene explains that he has never met a wealthy person who hadn't experienced losing money, 
but almost all poor people he met have never lost a cent. The lesson is clear. Becoming rich is synonymous with learning to take risks and minimizing the fear of them. Fear of losing money is innate in all of us. However, the fear itself is not the problem. It is our attitude towards risks that makes the difference. Winners are inspired by a failure, while losers are defeated by it. Winners aren't afraid of losing. They know that it will only motivate and inspire them to work even harder. Losers, on the other hand, won't even try because they can't handle failure. Failure inspires winners. Failure defeats losers, and it is a secret all winners know, but losers don't. Most people struggle financially because they play not to lose instead of playing to win. Robert Kiyosaki Cynicism People's doubts and uncertainties keep them poor. Technically, getting out of the rat race is very easy, but doubts keep rat racers paralyzed. Instead of analyzing as winners do, the cynics prefer to criticize. Their critique blinds them from seeing the opportunities. Many never get rich because the fear of losing money outweighs the joy of getting it. Laziness Counterintuitively, staying busy is the most common form of laziness. Busying ourselves with numerous activities and errands is the way to avoid facing our fears. Deep down, we all anticipate this simple truth. That's why we often get annoyed if someone reminds us of that fact. We are too busy to take care of our wealth, too busy to cater to our health and family. Bad Habits Education is not the only factor that defines success. The latter consists of certain habits. The rich always work on themselves. They invest in themselves first. Start building habits that bring you closer to your goals. Acquire a positive habit of reading every day. Also, exercise daily to strengthen your physical health. Find the time for the things that matter. Arrogance. Arrogant people often lose money due to their ignorance. They believe that if they don't know something, it is not important. If you want to be successful, you have to make humility a priority. If you are humble enough, you can learn something from each person that crosses your path and every situation you encounter. The phrase, I can't afford it, turns off your brain, whereas the question, what do I need to do to afford it, opens up possibilities, excitement, and dreams. Conclusion Our education system does not teach financial literacy. So, it's up to you to develop yourself. Building wealth will become easier and achievable if you learn to think like the rich and understand how the financial world operates. Never hesitate to invest in developing your mind. The single most powerful asset we all have is our mind. If it is trained well, it can create enormous wealth. Many things hold us back in our pursuit of getting rich, and the lack of money is not our worst enemy, unlike our false visions and misconceptions about how to become wealthy. The biggest one yet is the idea that we have to work ceaselessly for something else. However, harder work doesn't pay unless we learn to work for ourselves. A valuable piece of advice Robert Kiyosaki gives is that we should understand the difference between liabilities and assets. The former requires an investment on a regular basis, whereas the latter generates money for you. Moreover, we need to get familiar with how the taxation system works and follow Big Corporation's example regarding their earning, spending, getting tax cycle. Determined to succeed in getting rich, we need to keep in mind that fear, cynicism, laziness, arrogance, and bad habits will get us nowhere, even if we learn to allocate our money the best way. Try this. Keep expenses low. Reduce liabilities and diligently build a base of solid assets. True luxury is a reward for investing in and developing a real asset. The rich focus on their asset columns, while everyone else focuses on their income statements. Start thinking like the rich and focus on building your asset columns. Keep in mind that real estate is a powerful investment tool for anyone seeking financial independence or freedom. If you get the opportunity to invest in real estate, take it. Connect with successful people in the business you are interested in and learn as much as you can from them. Money comes and goes, but if you have the education about how money works, you gain power over it and can begin building wealth.